so people wanted to talk about the orthodontic protocol or how the orthodontic setup takes place prior to orthognathic jaw surgery. So conventionally, there'd be a period of pre-surgical orthodontics, which means braces were in place for a fairly long period of time, eight, 10, 12 months, sometimes longer. And the goal of this was to move the teeth or quote unquote, decompensate the teeth, moving them into a more ideal position within the bone so that they're nice and stable and that there's no crowdings and that the upper jaw arch and the lower jaw arch are compatible with one another. So if we were to move the upper and lower jaw in space with jaw surgery, we want the teeth to be able to intermesh or meet together quite well. Um, and pre-surgical orthodontics would enable that. So you'd have that period of pre-surgical orthodontics with decompensation you'd undergo jaw surgery with the braces on and then at some period of time post-operatively the orthodontist would see you again and then start doing the final finishing touches to get the teeth um, to meet even better and more compatible and then have the braces ultimately removed usually four to six months later uh, place the retainers and uh, set you into the usual orthodontic uh, post-op uh, uh, post-orthodontic care at that point. However, now, uh, as many of you know, there are some changes and there's more 3D tools, more 3D technology that enables a lot more planning in this point in time. So one of the big changes is these clear aligner type uh, um, orthodontic therapy. So instead of the traditional brackets and wires and uh, moving the teeth in that way, you can have these clear plastic aligners like Invisalign that will move the teeth. And that's an option as well to set you up for jaw surgery and then more Invisalign after jaw surgery. The caveat to that is um, there's not as much three-dimensional control. And this is somewhat up to your orthodontist too with their comfort level, but there's certain vertical movements or up and down movements of the teeth that cannot be accomplished as easily um, with Invisalign. Additionally, we would need some different things uh, from the orthodontist prior to surgery where because there's nothing on the teeth to hold elastics, we would have them place some small hooks on the teeth to help us with that. And the other caveat is that because your opening can be a little more uh, limited for the first period of time after surgery, it can delay the resumption of that Invisalign for a period of time that ordinarily with regular braces you could start sooner. Another thing that we can talk about that's both with conventional braces and with Invisalign or clear aligner therapy is what's called surgery first. So this is a protocol where instead of that prolonged eight or 10 months of uh, orthodontics before surgery. Basically, there's no um, orthodontics completed before jaw surgery. That doesn't mean you don't see an orthodontist, but you see the orthodontist and they have to be comfortable with this. They have the plan uh, of how they need to move the teeth, and not everybody's a candidate for this, but that plan is incorporated into how we're going to move the bones. Sometimes we need to do some uh, concurrent widening of the upper jaw and do things to make it more compatible. But the advantage of this is it saves you that time um, of orthodontics before jaw surgery, but it makes the orthodontic period after jaw surgery a little bit longer, but the overall treatment time uh, with orthodontics is a little bit less. Um, and that goes for Invisalign or clear aligners too. Sometimes you can do um, this surgery first type approach with uh, Invisalign or clear aligners as well, where there's not much done before surgery, but yes, quite a bit after surgery. Another example looking at this is that we see a lot of patients for either sleep apnea or cosmetic concerns, or they had what's called compensated orthodontics in the past, where they have some jaw discrepancies, but because of things that the orthodontist did, they were able to create a pretty good bite for them, but still they have some facial imbalances and they need the bones advanced. So it's not true surgery first in that they've never had orthodontics, but they have a pretty good bite that we're maintaining and then we're moving both of those jaws in space. But we still want you to have an orthodontist to place those hooks pre-operatively if it's going to be a clear aligner. And because where we're repositioning the jaws, the 
muscles can pull differently and the teeth may shift slightly and we'll want to have uh, orthodontia completed after surgery. So it's kind of like a surgery first, but it's because they have a quite good bite already that we're trying to maintain and move the jaws for both aesthetic and or um, airway reasons. And the last thing to talk about really is this kind of hybrid approach where, um, which I think is more and more common, where instead of the long 10, 12 months pre-surgical orthodontics, um, you can do something in between where it's maybe four months or six months. So it's not a true surgery first where there's no orthodontic intervention before a surgery, but it's not this elongated period of a year where there's orthodontic uh, intervention, but it's a short preoperative phase have the surgery and then complete the orthodontics after. And in some situations we see regular braces leading up to surgery and after surgery. And then a couple months later, they can be switched to Invisalign, which can optimize, especially adults and professionals that are wanting to get back to work in school that don't wanna have braces, you can have that transition. Every case is different, obviously, and every orthodontist has different comfort levels with these things, but this is what we typically see, um, and we're able to work really with any of these different philosophies and sequences, uh, but in most all cases, we do want to have an orthodontist involved. Even if you feel that your bite is perfect beforehand, we still want an orthodontist to be involved before the surgery, and very likely they'll need to do some intervention afterwards. So thanks for listening. If you have any other questions, please check us out on our website, uh, www.dericksteinbacher.com. Thanks again.